As much as I love celebrating the best products and the most exciting innovations here on Just Ride Bikes, it's also fun to take a look back in time at the products and innovations that didn't really catch on. And today I want to celebrate a hydraulic shifting group set, smart glasses, and a group set with no chain. Products that so far have not caught on. So let's dive in. And by far the most radical product that has under delivered in the last 10 or 15 years is a ceramic speed driven chainless concept that debuted way back in 2018. Actually, that was only four years ago. Time flies. I was actually at Eurobike, the show where this new concept was debuted for the first time and interviewed Jason Smith, the founder of Ceramic Speed on camera while I was working at Road CC. His drive and ambition for the driven concept was a drivetrain on a bicycle that would be as efficient as possible. A heady 99% claim was a figure doing the rounds at the time. Now for context, a typical drivetrain on a bicycle with a chain and sprockets and so on is between 90 and 98% efficient. But one study back in 1999 showed that a drivetrain can be as efficient as 98.6%, so very impressive, and shows how much the efficiency of a drivetrain can really vary. So many variables, conditions, quality of components, and so on. The two individual pinions use a total of 21 ceramic speed ball bearings that create the engagement interface of the drivetrain and claim to reduce the points of contact compared to a regular setup, thus reducing the friction. The hollow carbon shaft houses a battery for the electronic wire shifting with a huge flat cassette type device offering the gears on this setup. They managed to make a rideable sample with a specialized Venge and a Canyon Lux full suspension mountain bike, but nobody that I know of outside of the company has actually used it. So how it works and how it feels on the road is anybody's guess. But the reaction from the armchair experts at the time was pretty brutal, it has to be said. But personally speaking, I'm a real fan of innovation and I'm open-minded to new ideas or old ideas reinvented. It's why, after all, we ride the amazing bicycles we do and not old penny farthings, thank goodness. Because somebody at the time challenged the status quo and tried to come out with a better solution. Sometimes ideas are one step forward and two steps back, but that incremental improvement gets us to where we are now. And sometimes you need people to really push the boundaries of what's acceptable to see whether there's a better way of doing it. Now, we haven't heard much about the driven concept in the last few years, much less seen a product on sale. So I emailed the company to find out what's happening. And it turns out the driven part of the business had been separated, so it's a separate entity now from Ceramic Speed, and that the staff there are still working on the product and still aiming to bring it to market at some point in the future. So to be honest, it's far too soon to write off a driven concept as much as we might laugh about it in the comment section below the video. It might, when it becomes available, be so amazing that it'd be a radical reinvention of a bicycle as we know it. But it does have me pondering a bigger question about the future of the bicycle, and particularly the group set and the drivetrain on the bicycle. Is this the right direction for the future of the bicycle? Personally speaking, I'd love to see a bicycle where all the components, the front and rear mech and the chain, everything are all inside the frame. A small gearbox within the bottom bracket that's small and light and has all the gears you need on-road and off-road and no expensive delicate parts hanging from the frame and out of the mud and water and other contamination a totally sealed unit although you still need to get the power from the cranks to the rear hub somehow but there are belt drives and there are other solutions out there and we're seeing mountain biking e-bikes and urban bikes do stuff differently to how high-end road and gravel bikes are doing it right now. But right now, it's seeing the chain and the drivetrain, as we know it, is the product that we'll be seeing for the next few decades, probably. But the driven concept does look like being a bit of a disruptor if it ever comes out to market. So Rota is a Spanish company that you might be familiar with, 
best known for their non-round chain rings and also crank sets and other parts of the bike. But in 2016, they decided very boldly to get into the group set market. A good time because electronic group sets were really maturing and they felt the opportunity was there to offer a group set. And what they did wasn't mechanical shifting, it wasn't electronic shifting, and it wasn't even wire shifting. No, it was hydraulic shifting. Hydraulic, like your brakes, but for gears. And the idea was great on paper. No batteries, so lightweight, low maintenance, a totally sealed unit, and hoses that can be routed through frames and handlebars more easily than gear cables. But when you rode it, well, the experience, in my opinion, was a long way from those heady expectations. The shifting was lethargic and vague, and a long way from the precision we're used to with modern group sets. A real shame. And that based on my review in 2019 when I was at Row CC on a gravel bike. I had high expectations for the group set, but it just wasn't on a par with the group sets we have from Shimano, SRAM, and Campag. And that's part of the problem. Shimano, Campag, and to a lesser extent SRAM have been developing, evolving, refining group sets over many, many decades. And by and large, they got much better over time. There have been a few bloopers along the way as well, but a group set today compared to what we had 20, 40, 60 years ago are much better. Lightweight, more reliable, definitely more reliable, uh, more gears, and just all good things. And Rota had very little experience and tried to catch up and keep up with that higher bar set by the companies. And to be honest, it just didn't meet that expectation. But I can see the group set with another five, 10 or 15 years of development with more resource and more money pumped into it, possibly catching up. But it might be an inherent limitation in the way a hydraulic works compared to that hard precision you get from an electronic or wire shifting setup. But the one redeeming feature of a group set at the time, and still now to a lesser extent, but Campag have sort of caught up, was a 1x13 setup. Yes, a 13 speed cassette Wormhole Campag came out with Eckhart. And it's fair to say, since its launch, it hasn't been a sales success at all. But you can still buy the Rotor Uno group set, as it's called, but it retails for nearly 3,000 euros. And that's more money than a brand new Shimano Ultegra 12 speed DI2 group set. So be honest with me, which group set are you choosing? Let me know in the comment section below. Back in 2015, we all thought, well, many of us thought, that smart glasses were gonna transform the world. And Google definitely did. Their glass was a serious attempt to provide an optical head-mounted display disguised as a pair of glasses. And US company Recon Jet tried to bring the concept to a pair of cycling glasses. They packed in all the tech, a bike computer, camera, smartphone, social media interface with Bluetooth, GPS, Wi-Fi and AMP Plus. Yes, they really were smart. So riding along without taking your eyes off the road, you can see your speed, power, view a map and follow navigation cues, listen to music, even film close passes with a camera on board before filming close passes was a thing. Problem was, they weren't actually that good. For a start, they're really expensive, way more money than a top of the range Garmin Edge computer at the time. So asking a lot, for a technology that wasn't as mature as Garmin's best computer at the time. All for the convenience of not taking your eyes off the road and looking down at your handlebar stem for a moment. And a particular problem for UK cyclists riding on the left side of the road, the correct side of course, is that the large block providing that head-up display was on the right side, so obscuring the parts of the road you really want to see. And regardless of which side of the road you're on, that chunky unit on the glasses did obscure your vision quite badly. And even if you could get used to it, the batteries only lasted a few hours as well. And to top it all off, well, let's be honest, let's not beat around the bush. You looked a bit of a dork if you wore them. And what happened to Recon Jet and the great promise of smart glasses that would transform cycling forever? Well, they were bought by Intel for quite a lot of money, but then sadly, just two years later, the company folded. Not Intel, the Recon Jet part of the business. So no longer available. And what happened to Google Glass? Well, they didn't last very long either, but interestingly, Google hasn't given up on the concept of a heads-up display in your glasses. And earlier, just this year, they launched a brand new AR augmented reality glasses that should become the market fairly soon. 
So maybe 2015 was just too early in terms of technology maturity to provide a heads up display that actually worked. So maybe it's time for round two of smart glasses on the bicycle. If you like those three tech fails and you wanna see some more, then check out the video right up here. And don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button right here. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again very soon.